No. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, I have uh, one, one announcement. Uh, I sent the uh, Zoom link for the coffee break, and uh, we can, uh, you can use it from now. Thank you. Yes. Are you okay, Nomi san? Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, um, yes, that's right. Yes, I can see. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay it's time. Uh, thank you for coming back to the session. Uh, let's start the next talk. Uh, the speaker is Toshifumi Nomi from Kobe University. The title is Swamp and Conjectures and Gravitational Positivity. Please start. Thank you for introduction and also thank you very much for the kind invitation to this nice workshop today. So in this talk, I'm going to be speaking about the so-called swamp land program and the role of the gravitational positivity bound in this context. Ah, so my name is Toshihimi Nomi and I'm from Kobe University. And this talk is mainly based on a paper to appear in collaboration with Junsei Tokuda. He's a postdoc in Kobe University. And also it is uh, partially based on a work in progress with Junsei and also Katsuki Aoki, he is a postdoc at YITP and Lok Tran, he is a student in Cambridge. And this, these papers are along the line of our previous work. Okay, so as in the titles, my talk has two keywords, swampland and positivity. And first, as an introduction to explain my motivation, uh, let me give a brief introduction to swampland program. So, uh, so first, uh, one of the greatest appeals of string theory is that it provides a framework to generate QFT models, which incorporate quantum gravity in a consistent manner. So for example, by changing brain configurations or shapes of extra dimension, uh, we can uh, generate infinitely many QFT models in a consistent way with quantum gravity. And such a vast theory space of string theory is called the string theory landscape. So now, now I've just mentioned that string theory can cook up many, many models. So a natural question to ask next will be if every QFT model can be realized in string theory. And presumably the answer is no. And as already mentioned in uh, Nakata-san's talk, uh, there is a famous work by Haro and Oguri in 2018. And in their paper, they used holographic and quantum fee formation uh, perspective to demonstrate that there should be no global exact symmetry in quantum gravity. So this is one famous example for non-trivial quantum gravity constraints on QFT models. And such quantum gravity constraint is known as swampland, swampland conditions. So for example, if your model uh, violates this uh, quantum gravity constraints, your model is said to be in the swampland, okay? And in this talk, uh, I'm interested in uh, utilizing such quantum gravity constraints for phenomenology, such as phenomenology for particle physics or cosmology. So, so, so in this context, let us first think about what we can learn from no global symmetry criterion, which is very understood. 
and there is already a kind of almost proof. So no global symmetry says uh, that there should be me, no Yeah, yes. Uh, oh, have you already uh, turned over the page? Ah, me more already four pages or so. Oh, so ah, uh, uh, now uh, I see the title of ah. the slide. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Ah, maybe, maybe. Uh, let, let me connect it again. I, I, I don't know why it didn't work. Uh, yeah, now I can see that. Yeah, now ah, I can oh, see okay. that. Right. Okay, thanks. So, I, I, okay, so basically I was just mentioning that uh, string theory has many, many uh, QFT models. And this is called string theory landscape. And uh, the non trivial quantum gravity constraints on QFT models are called swamp land, swamp land condition. And the famous example is a no global symmetry criterion, uh, which is argued uh, also in Harrow and Ogilvy of 2018. Uh, uh, wait, somehow. Oh. Uh, sorry, please don't change. Yeah, I, I changed the slide, but ah, it seems. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, okay. Maybe. maybe uh, mm -hmm. oh, I, I don't know what is happening. Okay. Oh. Ah, okay. Can I connect it from my iPad, maybe? Sure. Okay. Yeah, sorry for this problem. Did you connect? Yes, I connect. I should be able to. And ne, no, no, me? In yes. Name yes. Or other name you are using? I can. See. Ah, OK. Then, then I, I, I change it. Yeah. I think now you can share your slide. I think you're muted, Nomi san. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, can, can, uh, maybe can you wait for a few minutes to uh, to download my keynote file to iPad? You could also share, just share your screen, a PC screen. Ah, also. okay. Yeah, okay. I, I will just show. Okay. Do, do you see my castle? Yes, yes. Ah, okay, so maybe let, let me use this instead. Yeah, sorry for the problem. Uh, okay, so let me restart. So, so I was okay. So my motivation is to use quantum gravity constraints for phenomenology. And uh, so first, for this purpose, let me uh, yeah, let us think about what we can learn from no global symmetry criterion for phenomenology. So the no global symmetry criterion says that uh, there should be no exact global symmetry, and basically there are two options. To, uh, to satisfy this uh, criterion. The first option is to gauge the symmetry. 
mean, uh, so meaning the charged particles have to be coupled to gauge boson with some coupling G. But uh, no, get, no global symmetry criterion simply says that this gauge coupling has to be non-zero. But it doesn't say if this value is like 0.1 or 0.01 or whatever. So for example, if G is equal to 10 to minus 100 is allowed, this criterion is phenomenological, phenomenologically useless. So the second option is to break this symmetry, uh, for example, weakly at some scale. And again, no global symmetry criterion simply says that, uh, for example, exactly flat potential are problematic. And as Nakata-san mentioned sometime today, uh, if this symmetry breaking is, uh, if this, if very, very weak symmetry breaking is allowed, it is again phenomenologically useless. So, so for phenomenology, we need more quantitative quantum gravity constraints beyond no global symmetry criteria. And actually in the Swan Plant program, uh, various quantitative quantum gravity constraints have been proposed. And the famous ones include weak gravity conjecture, which provides a lower bound on gauge coupling. And also distance conjecture pro uh, uh, predicts uh, how much symmetry has to be broken. So these two are a generalization of no uh, uh, quantitative generalization of no global symmetry criterion. But unfortunately, most of these con conditions are still at the level of conjectures. And the motivation uh, of our work is the following. So can we derive such quantitative quantum gravity constraints uh, based on some uh, very understood consistency conditions, such as uh, consistency of gravitational scattering amplitudes? So this is the motivation of our work. So we would like to provide quantum gravity constraint quantitatively based on consistency of scattering amplitude. So this is a motivation of our work. Okay. So now let me go to the second section. So here I will, I will, I will explain what is a positivity bound. This is the second keyword of my talk. And so the purpose of this section is telling you that we have a solid understanding of consistency, some quantitative consistency condition. So it is a bit technical, but uh, I think, yeah, maybe you can inspire, be inspired by this section. So let me explain basic idea of positivity. So basic idea is to, to provide the UV constraints on IREFT. So, so first, let me review what is positivity in the context of uh, non-gravitational theory, which is uh, developed by Adams and uh, his collaborators in 2006. So for concreteness, let us consider a shift symmetric scale at pi coupled to some, coupled to some heavy particles. And this is a typical uh, particle spectrum we have in mind. So we have massless particle here, pi is here, and we have some heavy states around here. And if you are interested in low energy dynamics of pi, we can write down IREFT of pi in this way. So here, the first term is a kinetic term, and the second term is a leading order correction. And for example, information about heavy particles are encoded in this coefficient alpha. And this lambda can be thought of as a cutoff scale of this EFT. And uh, this positivity bound says that positivity of alpha follows from unitarity and analyticity of scattering amplitude, as I explain quickly in the next slide. Okay. So to derive this bound, let us study four-point scattering of this pi, 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 pi scattering in the forward limit. So, so first, let me remind uh, you what kind of analytic structure this forward amplitude have. So here ms is a scattering amplitude and s is a Mandelstam variable, so, so scattering energy. And on the complex S plane, for example, we have a single pole associated with three level exchange of some partic massive particle. And if you have massive particle states originating from loops, we have branch cut like this. And in order to give a bound on the previous EFT coefficient, let us expand this scattering amplitude at, 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 at IR in this way. And we are, I'm going to sh show that AN has to be positive. And in particular, positivity of A2 is directly related to the positivity of alpha, since uh, we can calculate scattering amplitude in terms of EFT. So to to derive this bound, let us first consider this type of uh, quantum integral. 
So here, this blue curve is the integration counter surrounding the origin. And then this integral gives you a to n, the coefficient of s to the to n. And next, let us deform this integration counter in the following way. So we have counter here and here. So originally, we were looking at the origin, which is at IR. But now, because of analyticity, we can look at high energy behavior of scattering energy like this. And in particular, uh, we have two types of integration counters. The first one is at the infinity, and the other one is on the real axis. And if we assume that scattering amplitude is very bounded at infinity at high energy, which is motivated by the so-called forcer bound, then uh, this A to N is directly related to the integral along the real axis. And in particular, uh, this integrand is the imaginary part of scattering amplitudes. And the optical theorem says that it has to be positive as a consequence of unitarity. So in this way, unitarity and analyticity of uh, UV theory imply positivity of alpha in IREFT. Okay, so this is a well-known positivity bound. And in our context, uh, I, I would like to think of UV theory as quantum gravity theory. And I would like to think of IREFT as a QFT model. And based on this type of positivity, I'd like to give some quantum gravity constraint on QFT model. But before doing that, let me just remind you that in quantum gravity, uh, in gravitational theory, positivity has to be slightly modified. So to explain the situation, uh, positivity in gravitational theory, uh, let, us, let me show you what kind of behavior, forward limited behavior uh, this pi 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 pair scattering has. So at, at low energy, we can expand uh, scattering amplitude in this way. So here the second term was the one in the previous slide. So this is no gravitational effect. But on top of that, we have effect of graviton exchange. In particular, because of the spin two nature of graviton, we have T over S square behavior. And in the forward limit where T goes to zero, this term dominates over A2. So because of this graviton exchange, uh, we cannot use the previous argument directly to show positivity of A2. But actually, we can say something by assuming a type of UV completion of gravity. So, so first, intuitively speaking, uh, we know that positivity should hold in non-gravitational theory, so positivity should hold if gravity is subdominant. And by assuming that uh, gravity is, uh, has a weakly coupled UV completion like uh, perturbative string theory, we can explicitly show that this A2 uh, has to be bounded like this. So here, uh, M Planck is the Planck mass, and Ms is a mass of higher spin register states required by UV perturbative uh, UV completion. So in string theory, this Ms is basically string scale. So, and here, uh, this order one coefficient uh, is some uh, UV dependent coefficient and the sign and value of order one coefficient depend on details of its trajectories. And, and if you are interested in it, you can look at this nice paper by Tokuda Oki and Hirano, how to, uh, which relates order one coefficient in terms of its trajectory. So anyways, in gravitational theory, if we assume weakly coupled UV completion of gravity, uh, we can have a quantitative bound like this. Okay. So finally, uh, how much time can I spend from now? Uh, oh, about 10 minutes. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, so sorry. Uh, uh, I should get yeah, please. Please. Okay, uh, so can I ask okay, a question? Okay, okay. So, so, uh, okay, so, so how did you derive this bound? I mean, in the presence of gravity, um, do, do you use this contour deformation thing? Ah, okay, so, so in order to derive this, let me see. So first, in the presence of, of gravity, uh, we have this divergence. And on top oh. of that, if we consider Einstein gravity, oh. uh, scattering amplitude behaves like a squared at the infinity. Oh. And as I mentioned before, here I'm assuming that amplitude is bounded by a square. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So this assumption is violated in Einstein gravity. That's why we have to UV complete gravitational theory. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And if we assume string theory, uh -huh. this behavior is modified like S to the two plus alpha prime T. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So for, for fixed T uh -huh. at high energy, which is range limit, in this range limit, we can satisfy this S square bound. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. And by, by carefully looking at this uh, range behavior of this amplitude, uh -huh. uh, we can 
relate, uh, uh, we can derive this type of one. Oh, I see, I see. And that's okay. why uh, the scale of register state appear here. Ah, okay, I see. So, okay. yeah, thank you for that. Uh, mm -hmm. I see, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, so the point was that, uh, so original motivation is to derive quantitative quantum gravity bound. And I just mentioned that uh, we can derive something quantitatively by using positivity argument of gravitational scattering. And now I'd like to advertise our work applying this positivity bound uh, for phenomenological setup. And I'm going to uh, explain two types of setup. So first setup is about QED and dark photon, uh, having in mind some dark matter type scenario. And the second one will be about scalar potential, scalar field potential. So first, let me explain our basic strategy. So, so first, suppose that we have a UV complete QFT model. For example, we can think of QED as a UV complete QFT model without gravity. But if we, and then let us couple this model to gravity. For example, couple to Einstein gravity. Then the model is normal UV complete because we have to uh, UV complete gravity, Einstein gravity. Then now we can ask if this model with gravity is UV completable in the similar sense of positivity. And if we assume weakly coupled UV completion of gravity, we can use the previous gravitational positivity as a criterion for this model to be UV completable. So this can provide one quantitative swamp land condition. So this is a basic idea. So, so as an example, let me first uh, explain uh, the model of QED and dark photon, uh, which is ba basically based on our my previous paper, but uh, it contains something slightly more. So, so in this section, I'm interested in dark matter type scenario. So we have two sectors, our world and some dark sector. And for example, if we consider dark matter, standard model particle is coupled to dark matter only gravitationally. So we want to have this type of setup. And for concreteness as a toy model, let us consider the following setup. So, so here uh, I'm considering QED, which contains photon and electron as a, our world. And on the other hand, for dark sector, uh, I'm considering just pure Maxwell theory. And of course, this QED and Maxwell theory are okay. And now I'm coupling these two sector by gravity with Einstein uh, Hubert term. So, so this, this cartoon is a typical uh, particle spectrum I have in mind. So at low energy, we have gauge boson, uh, we have QED photon and hidden photon B and metric graviton. And on top of that, uh, we have electron. And we are considering gravitational theory. So we have to have gravitational register state like higher spin state around here, which is above string scale. And uh, if necessary, we may have some other particles below the string scale. So some, somewhere between lambda, cutoff scale lambda and MS. So this is a setup we have in mind. And now we can calculate the scattering amplitude and we can ask if this model is consistent with uh, gravitational positivity mentioned earlier. So I skipped the details of computation, but uh, uh, we can explicitly calculate the coefficient of a square. So the A2 coefficient. And after the computation, we find this type of inequality. So here, this, so the point is that this term is negative. And this term uh, has an origin in this type of graviton, graviton exchange diagram with electron loop. So I'm concerned A, B, A, B scattering, and we have electron loop and we have graviton exchange here. And the point is this is negative. And on top of that, if we have some uh, heavy states between, below the string scale, uh, we will have a contribution from these green heavy particles. And these green particles uh, give you some contribution like this. And positivity says that this combination has to be bigger than some certain scale bounded by string scale. So first, as a consistency check, uh, we can see that uh, when we decouple gravity by taking Planck mass to infinity, uh, we can safely take lambda to infinity as well. So it is basically saying that the original QFT model without gravity is UV complete. 
But on the other hand, if we turn on gravity, uh, we have something non-trivial. And so, so, so far, specifically, if there are no heavy states between below this string scale, uh, a natural order estimate says that this, uh, lamp, this second term is around the same order as the string scale uh, coupling. And in such a situation, uh, we have to have a bound, like this negative contribution is below this scale. So it says that string scale has to be below the electron mass of electron coupling, which is uh, kind of crazy. So in this way, if we consider this specific model, uh, we can say that this model is basically in the swamp land. And next, uh, we can uh, discuss how we can uh, get, uh, how to get out of the swamp land. And I'm providing two types of options in this talk. And the first option is to turn on some tiny coupling between electron and dark photon with gauge coupling E tilde, for example. And after some computation, we can show that A2 is of this form. So, so if we uh, set E tilde to be zero, there is no this term, we have negative contribution. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, we, can have, we can satisfy the positivity bound by assuming that this, uh, this, uh, this thing is positive. And this condition is nothing but E tilde square is bigger than Me square over two M Planck square. So it is basically saying that hidden electric force is bigger than gravity. So this is some analog of weak gravity conjecture. And in particular, uh, this condition provides a quantitative bound on the coupling between this electron and hidden, electric, hidden photon. Another possibility is uh, to introduce heavy states below the string scale. And in this case, uh, these green states can contribute uh, to with some uh, order alpha over lambda to the fourth. Here, alpha is basically the coupling between these heavy states and uh, the photon. And in this case, in order for the positivity to be satisfied, we can derive a, a upper bound on the cutoff scale lambda like this. Okay, so anyway, basically uh, to summarize, positivity requires that uh, in, on top of gravity, there should exist some non-gravitational interactions mediating the two sectors, our real world and the hidden sector. So it is kind of suggestive for dark matter scenario because we can predict some bound on the interaction between standard model particle and hidden sector. I think it's almost the time. So let me skip the second example and I, I will mention the result only quickly. So now let me summarize my talk. So first I explained uh, what is swamp land program and basically we are interested in providing uh, quantitative gra quantum gravity constraints on QFT models, which should uh, for phenomenology. And I explained that uh, we can derive uh, some kind of gravitational positivity bound given like this, if we assume weakly coupled UV completion of gravity. And as an application, I explained what is happening if we consider QED in dark photon. And in this case, positivity requires no gravitational coupling to hidden sector. And uh, now we are uh, working on some more realistic models of dark matter, et cetera. And it would be nice if, if we can give a bound on the interaction between our standard model sector and dark matter sector. And also I didn't mention uh, this work because of time, but we can also derive some bound on scalar potential. And uh, the result is simply that positivity implies that the mass cannot be set arbitrarily small. So if we consider quantum gravity, and the, uh, if you consider QFT and if we accommodate fine tuning, we can set any scalar mass uh, arbitrarily small, but we can show that uh, such a tiny mass is prohibited by gravitational positivity. Okay, so yeah, so I wanted to say that gravitational positivity is useful to deriving uh, quantitative quantum gravity constraints. And hopefully it, it will be nice if we can find some uh, interplay between this type of approach and quantum information approach or energy condition type approach. Okay, let me stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you for the very interesting talk, Naomi-san. Uh, any question or comment? Oh, Ugajin-san, please. Ah, 
Ah, I, I have a question. So for, for example, if I, I mean that, uh, okay, so, so in the okay, final part of your talk, you mentioned that you need a non-gravitational coupling between the dark photon and uh, our real electron. Right. Um, okay, right. so for example, if I consider a typical string compactification, there are a bunch of U1 gauge fields and mm -hmm. uh, are they satisfying this condition? Yeah, so this is a good point, thanks. So if we consider string theory, and for example, if your open string is a matter field, uh -huh. Then it is basically bifundamental. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So it has it is charged for both U1 symmetry. Oh, okay. And this condition says that uh, this charge has to be bigger than gravity. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I see. So I see. this is naturally satisfied in string theory. I see, I see. Thank you. Any other question or comment? Oh, Urakawa san, please. Uh, I have another question. Uh, so in case that uh, you cannot uh, neglect uh, the background gravity at, uh, in the infrared limit, uh, does that change uh, quantitatively? Or... Uh, so you're asking, for example, what happens if we consider accelerated expanded yeah. universe? Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so yeah, at this moment, I don't have any uh, definite positivity bound in such a coupled space time. But but at least in ADS background, there is a big effort to derive this type of positivity using conformal mm -hmm. Pluto struck. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that you are giving a uh, DSGFT type talk tomorrow. So perhaps this approach could be useful to deriving uh, positivity in 